you have people who, in God's eyes, have a history of proving that their sense of the design of the union between a male and female, that their sense of that is grossly perverted. Okay? You have people, let me say that again. So you have people who have proven that their sense of God's design for a man and a woman is grossly and hugely perverted. But see, now, now our society is becoming so perverted. The, in the uh, native community, someone that was a transgender or bigendered or sodomite, they were not considered to be aberrant or doing something wrong. They were hailed as being a sign from the Great Spirit that this person has, has two spirits in them and we only have one. Therefore, they must be more special than we are. Now, take a look at this deity. Check it out. Ardana Risabara. I, you can ask me to pronounce any foreign language word in the world. Indian terms, and th I have the hardest, in the, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Ardhana Risvara. Ardana Risvara. Ardana Risvara. That's it. That's all I can do. A deity is half Shiva, half Shakti, masculine and feminine. Represents the two, two inseparable masculine and feminine energies that are the roots of creation. I want you to look at this. You know what you see here? You see here the Sephiroth, the Kabbalistic tree of life, the the tree of life in Kabbalah is half, ma half male, half female, together, joined together by the 22 paths in the 10 circles. Okay? So what does that mean? Let's say that the male half here, the, sh the sh uh, Shiva half, is sons of God. Shakti, which is the female spirit, daughters of men, or let's put it like this, Daniel 2. Shiva is they, the fourth kingdom powers from heaven. Shakti is the people of earth, and they mingle themselves with the seed of men, and this is what they produced right here. Male and female, yin and yang, hermaphroditic, androgynous, male and female together. The river Ganges flows from Shiva's head and he carries a trident and a drum, while she, Shakti, carries a sword and a rosary. Yep, there's more than one religion that prays a rosary, people. Beside them are respective vahanas or vehicles, the bull and the lion. You know what vehicles are? In God language, spirit language, chariots. You know what those are? Evil angels, like UFOs, right? That's what they represent. You have a bull and a lion. Those are two of the things that you see in Ezekiel chapter 1 that are the chariot that God rides on in Ezekiel 1, a bull and a lion or an ox and a lion. Opposites together paired together. Daniel 2, sons of God, daughters of men, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's what that represents. In ancient Egypt, the iconography of the Nile deities, Happy, God of the Nile River, and Wajwer, God of the Nile Delta, or sometimes the Mediterranean Sea, were sometimes depicted as androgynous. Uh, Tatanin, or Tanin, or Tanu, was the androgynous protector of nature from Memphis, known as Mennefer. Happy, shown with female parts, symbolic of the nurturing role of the Nile. In other words, a transgendered god-goddess creature in India and Egypt at the same... This is, this is universal, people. All of this shows you a spirit. 
the spirit of Baphomet, the priesthood of Baphomet, as it were, all right, in the Vatican and elsewhere. Uh, there's a similar syncretism of the god Shiva and Vishnu called Harihara. Ooh, I just remembered something. George, who's the Beatle guy? George Harrison. Did a song in the early, late 60s, early 70s. My sweet Lord, hallelujah. Background singers singing uh, hallelujah for a while. And then, not too many people noticed. They're not singing hallelujah anymore. They're singing Hare Krishna. George Harrison being a disciple of the Bhagwan or one of these one of these gurus. The background singer is going from Hallelujah to Hare Krishna. And at one point singing, you go, you go, you go to YouTube, type in my sweet Lord George Harrison, listen to it as they sing Hari Hara. Dun, dun. <laughs> I just, I just thought, just remembered that. So Hari Hara is the joining together of Shiva and Vishnu, symbolizing their unity as different aspects of the same divine concept. Okay, think about this. Beatles show up in this country for the first time, 1963. 1963 was a transformational, transitional year, at least for the United States of America, if not the whole world. From 1963 on, you see the transformation of America. And the Beatles come to this country. Everybody falls in love with the Beatles. Then the Beatles take on this transformation. They're not the good-looking, floppy-haired boys from Liverpool anymore. These are world ambassadors for the hippie culture, for the love-ins, for the communes, for the dope smokers, for the hip, uh, I've already mentioned the hippies, and for the weird religious practices. In other words, with them or alongside them or whatever, a spirit brought into this country, and it's a spirit of Harihara, Shiva Vishnu, Shiva Shakti. You see what I'm saying? An androgynous um, spirit, a spirit of sodomy, spirit of Baphomet, unleashed in America, and by, in 10 years' time, in 10 years' time, 1963, 1973, by 1973, you already have prime time television shows in America promoting homosexuality in a favorable light. 10 years' time is all it took. Now, now, look, now look at TV. Well, don't look at TV. In Japanese folklore, Inari is the kami or spirit of agriculture and rice. She has been portrayed as either male or female, or sometimes as an androgynous bodhisattva. She began to be worshipped in the late 5th century, and her gender differs according to regional beliefs and traditions. She has also been identified with Dakinten, a Buddhist deity who is occasionally represented as an androgynous bodhisattva riding a white fox. The spirit exists. Androgynous, transgendered, sodomite spirit. Now our nation is becoming the habitation of those spirits. Yin Yang represents that same Shiva Shakti, sons of God, daughters of men, anti the Antichrist, in my mind, is that 
the perfect balance of yin and yang, male and female. Whereas Christ, he's all male. He's not the son daughter of God. He is the son of God, period. But you see, when people have a different spirit in them, don't count on them to think correctly. When they have a different spirit on them, uh, let me throw this in. Be careful who counsels you. Be careful of the friends on Facebook that you private message stuff that's going on in your life or your marriage. Be careful how they counsel you. Because they may just count, if they are not saved, they don't think right. They don't think right. And when they counsel you, they're going to counsel you the way the spirit that is in them counsels them. And that spirit is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You can see the spirit of Baphomet and his priesthood at work in this nation right now. And... It's everywhere, everywhere. New